TGIF everybody. How's everyone doing today? Hope everyone had a decent week. There were a lot of great ideas that came out of FACE, even more that came out of all the research of the team. Hope you're, hello, Hamit. Hope everyone was able to take advantage of a few. I, I actually called a few things right in gold, talked about you know being long against this return line, this throwover line. Maybe it's not done. Maybe we're going to make one more push before we head lower. But it came off. I was talking about 1520 was viable. We got to uh, 24. And then silver, I said that uh, 1850 was viable. We got to 46. Uh, crude still looks ugly to me. The wildest thing yesterday was uh, what happened to the dollar. And I think it's significant. While we were here during the ECB, to me, it looked like a layup for a third drive. And then we got the big reversal. Um, not sure if it was just market disappointment with Draghi throwing everything in the, but the kitchen sink at it. Hello, Cheryl. But now I'd be very surprised if the correction is not underway because I look at weeklies on Friday and the big reason for looking at weeklies is I look for two week reversals, uh, which is something I teach. And this week's off number was uh, 9880. What was the high? Sometimes these off numbers, yeah, it got through the off number went to 910. But when you look at the weekly, this week's candle, it's not closed yet, but it's closing under this candle where we closed two weeks ago. So it's called a two week reversal. And maybe we're gonna head towards this line uh, you know, I don't think we're going to get a dollar crash, but why can't we do this over the next several weeks or months, head towards this 94 range? Everyone with me and understand the two-week reversal? It's simple, but if you watch the, the numbers during the week, at times they're decent to trade against. But you, the main use of it is saying, what's the dir weekly direction? Everyone with me? Give me why if you understand it. Try it out. You know, every week, uh, write down what are the off numbers going into uh, the following week. And also, uh, besides using it on weeklies, you could use it on any TF. Okay. So, uh, you know, Friday, there's no NFP. Um, looking ahead to next week. See this? Okay, so we're going to make new highs in, you know, S&Ps and NASDAQ. But, you know, we're still going to have glaring, glaring. This will be the second lower high. So what I see on the weekly is even clearer on the daily. Potential for three drives to a top formation at new highs over this 8,000 level. Maybe it's into the Fed. I'll be attempting shorts next week. So you have divergence there on the daily. Uh, it's marginal divergence on the uh, four hour. And I'd like to see one more high and the RSI stay under the 70 mark early next week. So anyway, it's a cleaner look to me, the NASDAQ for a th third drive than the S&Ps are. Okay, it's almost a different looking chart, isn't it? Anyway, so uh, I'll be looking for that. Uh, don't know what to do with the metals right now. I knew it was uh, uh, there was a pop coming, but it, it may not be complete. We like silver, you know, we look at it here that, you know, maybe this was the A part of it and this is the B part of it and we could still get a C part of it. We'll see. Um, also, keep an eye on yields now that we've approached a pretty important level, 180. Talked about it yesterday. Had a good week. Uh, this was something that Steve talked about in the, he was using the bonds. I was using the three drive that we had here, uh, down here at 140. Uh, I think you have a weekly buy signal on this. Yes, you do. 
So I don't know. Uh, I know some people are still looking for lower lows. Take out the the bonds already did it. The ten year, uh, the thirty year has. The ten year hasn't. This is a historical low, and that's going to tie in with uh, one more thing I'm going to talk about. I think this rally in the end will terminate with the uh, potential top that we have going on in. This again is a continuation. Uh, actually had a two week reversal last week. And if you took that signal long end, you did pretty good. Uh, so I'm actually thinking that the end tops with the S&Ps and short term, I see a two here, see confirmed diverging and a new high up here. Actually this measured, when I was talking about this formation here, this measure is 109. So can we get up there? I don't know, it seems like it's starting to run out of juice and we're running out of time if the S&Ps are going to uh, fail. I know a lot of people are now talking 3100 and I get it, I understand why they're doing it. It's something I talked about with this being an ascending triangle, breakout over 2940. So, you know, that's 160 points would give you 3100. Uh, we'll see. So uh, everyone get ready. The promo begins, I believe. Yes, uh, TN, the row, green and red is uh, uh, up volume and down volume. Is this what you're talking about? Oh, I'm not even showing it. The red, I don't have volume up here. Green and red columns. Anyway, uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. And I'm gonna turn it over to Blake and perhaps Blake has some things to say about what we're gonna do uh, as far as the promo beginning. And, uh, you know, Blake and I talked about it. I don't know what turned it yesterday, Blake. I think you told me on Skype, it was just simply uh, because there were a ton of options expiring yesterday, but that seems to be like, could that really be? No, it, 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 there, there were at the 110 level. That's what I think, um, you know, I thought it was going to drift back up there. But what it was is uh, it's interesting. There, Everybody was extremely bearish following the ECB and, you know, the the uh, the 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 it's basically QE forever and ever and ever until, you know, till death do us part. But it was um it was the idea that 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 the ECB reintroduced, um, you know, quantitative easing. The amount wasn't as much as everybody thought it was going to be, but it was okay. the idea that they were going to do it, you know, in, uh, you know, unlimited amounts. But what what was really interesting is the way that it, the tier system worked, and the an analysis that came following from banks is like, hey, wait a second. Um, you know, certain tier amounts are going to be, uh, are actually, the rates are going to go higher for, for some deposits and not others. And, um, and it, in essence, what it ended up being is it ended up being for some, you know, from, for some bondholders and, and institutions, it ended up being more of a rate hike. And so the Euro turned around because there's going to be this, you know, the, the, the market believes that there's going to be a, a rush of, you know, to buy, you know, some, some Euro assets and, and in, in turn to buy more Euros. And so the Euro, uh, this policy change. You want to put your charts up there, bro? Oh, oh sorry. I was, that's uh, okay. Was, you know, was, and uh, uh, also uh, could you declare at least for a while a Euro bottom based upon yesterday's action? Uh, yeah, well, th that well, that's the, well, that's the thing. Now we have this double bottom ba based based yeah. on what what I'm seeing here, and we're, we're at the bottom of this descending wedge, and uh, now we have a a, a, a bottom double, a double bottom in play. But more importantly, is because of this extreme policy change in, in from the ECB, and um, I was talking to a, a colleague in Chicago actually, who's. Uh, who um, be careful? Uh, they're all gangsters. Yeah, um, he's, he's I'm from, one of them. He's, he's from he's from England actually. Oh, he lives in Chicago. As a I carry a violin case around. Bro. Uh, he's, no, he's one of my. Sorry, 
<laughs> um, it's Friday and, and it's Friday the thirteenth, and I'm yawning. Sorry. Oh, it's um, the thirteenth. Oh, it, it is. Uh, but uh, he he was just saying, you know, policy changes uh, a lot of times mark reversals in currencies, as you know, as institutions now have to shift their um, the way that they're positioned in portfolios, and so this may have been this shift in the ECB that is going to prompt a lot of adjustments moving forward. Now, what we need for today in order for the Euro to continue higher is we need a weak retail sales number, which, you know, we're looking at today. Now it's, it's hard to bet against the consumer, the American consumer, but I think we all will agree. Is one of market forecasts for inflation? Huh? Is it? Is it what? Hard to bet against the American consumer. It it, it has been uh, notoriously. If you if you've been trying to uh, 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 sell against the U.S. retail sales, um, you found yourself in hot water over over the years. But let me explain something. Thanks. Bank of America and um, and Goldman Sachs, which happen to be the two leading for our top forecasters for us retail sales both uh historically they both see retail sales coming in weaker than expected today uh and you know goldman's goldman bank of america you know i i don't know about you guys but i i, I think bank of america has a lot of access to consumer spending data how about all the refis people could do now, Blake, with where rates are, and plus the appreciation of real estate? It's an ATM machine. It re reminds me of 2008 that people just took out seconds and refied, and it was a cash machine. Uh, the, it's similar right now. Consumers uh, that are fortunate to own a home that have appreciation over the last nine, ten years, they have a, you know they have a bank account there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but m more importantly, I'm, I'm more worried about the, the consumer, the baseline consumer, uh, you know, right now. And I think and, and, and like I said, it's probably the You're worried about me. OK, I'm, I'm a worried base, about I'm, I'm a baseline. I'm more I'm worried more about like the, the average consumer. Okay. And the strength of the average consumer, because I do believe that they are powering this economy forward. And if we start to see that trend reverse, which could start as early as today, then you have a, a situation where um, where we, we might actually continue to see some dollar weakness. And I believe the market's looking for reasons to buy the euro and a weak retail sales number today could be the... Uh, could be the catalyst that continues to drive, um, uh, you know, uh, the dollar lower. So if you look at this, this is a, this is a chart of, you know, consumer spending. If you start to see this really come off, um, and this is just, you know, uh, over the last year, you can see all of the consumer spending, you know, on retail sales and how strong that they are, you know, core retail sales. If those start to pull back, we could, I think, continue to see a move higher in the euro dollar and um you know one that's really a standout right now is the pound uh yeah. the pound broke it broke it broke its previous support uh we've been watching this you know 12370 level like a hawk talking about it i know steve's been talking about it i've been talking about it and yesterday i you know i said hey it's like a beach ball underwater you know, if, if it's not selling off, you know, the, the, I, you, you guys hear me say this all the time. It's like, you know, if it's not going down, there's usually one other direction to go. And in this case, the pound was not going down and it just eventually was going to pop. And then you got the euro that, you know, after the, the, the price action that we saw yesterday, uh, the risk to the euro or risk to the cable was to move higher. And I think I have to go back and look at my analysis from last night. Um, uh, no, just, uh, we're just talking about the, the 123.70 level, just holding it, continue to help hold, but you know, the break above there, it just, it kickstarted a real hell of a squeeze. You can see once it, once it, once it went, it went. So, um, I, 
I'm going to be watching the U.S. dollar here. And one of the things with the euro, just uh, just to reference the euro here, we're up against a little trend line that's held us uh, since you know June 18th, I guess. No, June uh, 26th, 27th, 28th, somewhere around there. And um, that trend line came right into play. We're knocking our head right up against it. So if we break into new highs today, uh, I don't think you want to be – I don't think you want to be short the euro at that point because then the risk of you know this double bottom really playing out you know we're we're looking at a you know a move here that takes us to one twelve fifty and if that happens then we have a big you know and this I blogged about this yesterday on the week ahead video uh, or week ahead video I'm sorry the uh, the 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 chart of the day if we break this descending wedge then you're talking about a move that will take us back up to 115 that's a 38 percent retracement of this entire move lower and that seems uh like a reasonable expectation you know you don't it, it's like wow you go from the euro from 110 to 115 and you think oh my gosh that's a what four percent move uh maybe you know four per, uh let's see that would be a from here yeah four percent move so that'd be a four percent move from here but it, it would take us up to levels that we saw in january um you know, it, 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 is that a, is that a, you know, is that a far cry from, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, out of the, is it out of the realms of possibility? No, I think it's extremely possible going into year end, you know, we could, we could see a move back up towards 115 and, you know, and, and then you could, you could argue that, uh, the whole year we had a, uh, you know, a 500 pip, uh, range, which is, is also, you know, not beyond the scope of, you know, what could happen, I think. So I, I, I would be just paying very close attention today to, uh, to, to the Euro and how it does, how it does above the 111 level. And like I said, we break above 111.10, uh, which is the highest from today. Then, um, then that should enact a, a, a little bit bigger squeeze in the Euro, uh, going into the weekend. I don't, I don't know if anybody's going to want to be looking for um, for continued, um, you know, uh, a, a you know, wanting to be short um, the euro if we're closing the week on the highs, especially with these, you know, big, big. And actually, I guess the weekly candle is probably pretty, pretty ginormous right now. Yeah, I mean that's a pretty big, big, you know. Uh, white candle, green candle. If you're looking at them at green charts, but you know, if we if we close up here at 111.30, 111.40, it's going to be uh, pretty uh, pretty massive looking. So, anyway, that's that's what I'm thinking right now uh, regarding uh, regarding the uh, the euro, and uh, that's how I'm trading it. And um, you know, I'm 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 thinking that 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 uh, we've we've got to we've got to see what retail sales brings us uh, here in a little bit. So. Um, now there's been some other moves, pretty big moves too. The euro is under a little bit of pressure, a little bit of profit taking ahead of the, the numbers. You can see some, some profit taking here. Um, did I miss anything? I'm wondering why the euro is coming off other than maybe pre, pre, uh, data jitters, I think is what it is. Uh, let's take a look at the yen pairs because the yen pairs, um, the, the, uh, dollar yen has come up to 161% extension of this move, 78% retracement of the last down move. And we're in a, I would say we're in a, you know, ascending wedge, really. And, you know, a, a move below the lows could be, you know, and this is, again, this would go along the lines of having a weak retail sales number. If, uh, if the dollar yen breaks down here, it could be fairly aggressive but you got to watch the rest of the yen pairs because the euro yen's knocking its head right up against 120 key resistance pound yen actually completed a double bottom today uh you know if you if you uh use forex analytics you know we've been looking at this double bottom for for uh for for quite some time and we actually completed it overnight um when we hit the 88 percent retracement that doesn't mean it that doesn't mean it's going to stop that just means that you know um it, it probably that if you're wondering why it, the pause in price that's that's specifically why i'm i'm assuming uh the aussie yen's just kind of holding up there the new zealand yen looks a little weaker uh we're coming out of this you know little channel here and wait hold on uh 
hold on. I think uh, I was saying if there's some 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 headlines that just came out, Canadian yen is uh, is knocking its head up against um, trendline resistance. So again, you know, some pretty big moves out, pr pretty big moves overnight. Uh, the big the biggest one to stand out is the cable. Uh, and matter of fact, uh, uh, let's see if Stelios is here and uh, see if he has any comments. Because I, Amanda in our chat room said that uh, that there was some news that that might have provoked the the pound to squeeze higher. Hello, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, hey. So uh, yes, you are right, and Amanda's right. There is um, uh, speculation. There's nothing firm or anything yet, but there is speculation that the uh, that Boris Johnson. Uh, might have a shift in the whole. Basically, you know, the, the main problem with the, the Brexit agreement, if it happens, is the Irish backstop. So the, the issue of the Irish border. And that's been the, the number one problem from the beginning. And there has been speculation based on sources, you know, the usual uh, stuff, that there might be a shift in the government, the UK government, in terms of how this gets tackled. Maybe there's going to be separate rules for Northern Ireland. Uh, things might change a little bit. And actually, there was a headline that the DUP also agreed to to some backstop changes that gave the Sterling a lift, but then Arlene Foster denied it, and Sterling didn't come down. So you make your own uh, <laughs> uh, decisions on that. But um, bottom line is there is more and more um, rumors and speculation that, that this Irish backstop may somehow get sorted. I can't be any more specific because I have no clue. They're, 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 you know, it's interesting. I, I've been forwarded a lot of different reporters uh, and, um, you know, uh, t t Twitter accounts that are reporting and it's not getting like mainstream like news that there are a lot of discussions and a lot of concessions that might be made, you know, behind the scenes regarding yeah. the backstop. And, and I, it seems like there's a lot of positive momentum right now regarding Brexit. Uh, or, you know, a deal anyway. Um, and so uh, I think, you know, shorts are probably getting a little nervous here, I would assume. And, uh, yeah. and, and, and I, and I keep re reading little bits and pieces, but to me, it, you know, like, what you're saying it's it is all very confusing and it's like yeah and and remember you know angela merkel a few days ago or what a couple of weeks ago she also said uh, a, 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 a let's say a positive comment regarding the backstop and regarding how things can be negotiated so she you know my my theory is you know when there's smoke there's fire i think so uh, the more we hear about um, talks uh, being made, being had, and then maybe concessions being made. I think that the chances are rising. I'm not saying it's a done deal, not far from it, but um, I think, like you say, uh, this is all constructive for the pound and until they get denied, obviously, but if they get denied. So um, this is where we stand, I think, at the moment. All right. All right. And and I hear Steve in the background. I know he's been trying to talk, and um, so I, I we got to let him, uh, we got to let the, you know, we got to let the man speak. <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, is, if he starts, he doesn't stop. So, uh, mm. so I, I have been kind of trying to like contain him, but I don't think I can contain him anymore. What's happening, Steve? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. A little bit tired this week has been long, but um, good. Do you need I, some holidays, mate? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm going to spend them in your house, if you don't mind. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, uh, Steve, you were trying to say something a little bit earlier about the consumer. Um, I'm, uh, I'm in general, uh, you know, I've expressed that multiple times, and I don't think that, I know for a fact that Stelius agrees, and I don't think that anybody really disagrees besides the time horizon. You know, this kind of uh, economic, um, uh, you know, prosperity plan, uh, you know, can't last forever. I mean, um, you know, Americans, uh, along Actually, with other developed countries, but mostly Americans, because, you know, America has been the, the recent, by recent, I mean, like a, a century ago, like, the, you know, the biggest economic miracle we've ever seen, did realize that debt is a good thing when you use uh, debt to build capital, and then you use capital to build a productive economy. Uh, but now we've transformed economies to uh, mechanisms of consumption based on debt, and that is unsustainable. So 
Yeah, the, the consumer has been consuming more and more by going in debt further and further. Um, let me say on that that I don't know if, if you've seen, guys, but for example, um, interest rate on credit cards has been at record highs, for example, in the U.S., like, you know, an average like 18 and a half, 19 percent, and still people go deeper into credit debt. What a spread for the credit card companies. Can Banks you imagine that? Money. Yeah, well, 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 consumers continue to, to, to pay. Yeah, so. that's what I mean. But, you know, what, what are the credit card companies paying for money? Zero, one percent, and charging 19? What yeah, you, but, that, but that's cool. usury. Coach, you need to keep something um, in mind, which is very important. A credit card debt is not a mortgage. I mean... Yeah, the, unsecured. A, it's completely unsecured. And one of the facts, one of the reasons likely that interest rates are climbing on credit card debt is probably a bad omen. Delinquencies. Exactly. Because when do you actually increase uh, the interest you're asking for an unsecured debt, when you either already have an increased rate of delinquencies or when you're afraid that it's coming, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> been there. Yeah. So hey, I'm, I'm totally, this is off topic. I guess the, 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 the reason why the Euro did come off a little bit is uh, Amanda said that um, uh, rain uh, from ECB said that more, more rates cuts via tiering could, uh, could happen. So that's what uh, that's what sent the euro a little lower. But uh, you know there were buyers, obviously. Great lines, great yeah. chart, Blake. Well, uh, yeah, it's just a, I like know, it. this is a, this. I, I like. I still think the risk is higher. So um, that might that oh, dip might have been uh, the dip for people to be able to. Pick what up. happened? What happened yesterday with the euro, Blake? It reminds me quite a lot what happened a few we uh, weeks back with the Aussie Kiwi. The Aussie Kiwi, when we had event risk with both the, the Australian Central Bank and the um, New Zealand Central Bank, if you remember, it spiked at some point below the previous low, yeah. um, which is, you know, almost what happened here. Everybody that was looking, you know, for more upside in the Aussie Kiwi was out of the market. And then Aussie Kiwi started climbing higher. So for some reason, I can't stop thinking that perhaps what happened yesterday is equivalent to that. With yeah. Europe. Yeah, po yeah, it's quite possible. And hey, um, just I'm going to pass it over to you. We're, we're just a couple minutes outside of retail sales. Remember, guys, we have a special offer that's going to be released on Monday. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a, a a big changes are coming to Forex Analytics. And if you're not part of the Forex Analytics family, this is going to be your your opportunity to get in at you know what are some of the best prices of the year. Um, uh, this is our, I think our best seasonal offer really close to anyway, yep. um, enjoy mm -hmm. it. And, uh, and, and guys, I'm going to pass it over to you. Uh, we're just a couple minutes out of the, the news. Um, good luck today. Happy Friday the 13th. And, um, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the Sunday week ahead video. Thank you, Blake. Have a good Thanks, weekend, guys. Blake. You too. Hey, Don't Steve, you. don't we have a promotion where we're paying people to join? Rate is not much. <laughs> Listen, if we, were, if we were a central bank, we yeah. would probably at this point, right? Yeah, <laughs> we'll pay, pay pay someone forty bucks a month just to yeah. hang out with us. You no, know, Steve Steve Martin did that in Lonely Guy. I mean, he bought cardboard cutouts for friends. So anyway, okay, I'm done. <laughs> So, um, as as Blake mentioned before, uh, let's see Central what happens. Central next, Star Trek. Reversal uh, rate on the bottom. Our 45 the seconds. Is there you anything to blast. add during those 45 seconds? Says not sure, Johnson. Uh, no, it's been it's been pretty quiet otherwise. I mean, we in the chat room, we're talking about other stuff. So, <laughs> what we're, uh, Cheryl li likes that idea that it would be, she'd like to be paid. We'll pay mm -hmm. someone to... Uh, use our blood, sweat, and tears every week. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Cheryl. I'm sending you a uh, refund for face. So look for that. I actually double that. I'll put Ten seconds before the release. Okay. okay. Nine, eight, seven, six. <laughs> Let's see. Lift off. Yeah. yeah.
expected 0 0.2. Let's see. I bought some do. underwear last week. Let's see if it comes in there. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, there it is. There is your underwear. Retail sales huh? Core is lower. Uh, retail oh, sales is higher. Yeah. US and, retail X gasoline and automobile. And we also have a slight revision higher. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so let's see what that does to market. Have you joined group? Uh, and popping on it. Dollar strengthening somewhat, but nothing really. US to write home about it yet. Zero point zero percent versus and popping a little bit. US retail control zero point three percent versus zero To be honest, having to, do with, to, uh, having to do with the euro, Blake already mentioned it. You can see it here on the daily chart. He's, he he was looking at this intermittent descending trend line retail and keep in mind that 0 .0 this is a triple confluence of, of resistances, right? At one. Uh, 111, 0.2, 111, 111.10 to be exact. You can see why it's the 38.2 of this move lower. It is previous lows uh, there, and it's also this descending trend line support. So yes, um, I agree with everything he said. A break above there targets this wedges descending trend line, which currently passes, let's say, from 112.80, uh, and of course, you know, every single day it's going to be moving lower. Um, if for some reason we make it then and then we break higher, uh, I'm pretty sure that we're going to see some kind of a massive squeeze. I mean, I consider it very easy uh, that if, if that happens, that's a big if, of course, right? Um, we can see EURUSD within uh, a reasonable period of time trade back at 118. Uh, not unlikely at all. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm paying close attention to that. Now, having to do with minus the cable, um, Blake mentioned that as well. If you remember, we kept saying again and again and again, 123.70, 123.80, uh, major area of resistance. The recent price action was quite telling because we were consolidating but not pulling back from it. We've now broken higher above it. In my opinion, the, the only thing left is to see a daily, and since it's Friday, a weekly close above 113.80, uh, 123.80, and we're headed higher. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Now, having to do with the implications of that to the DXY, because don't forget that in combination, um, the Euro USD with the cable and with the USD Swiss, which is doing more or less the opposite than Euro USD is doing at the moment, uh, consists of a big part of what the DXY is doing, that would point uh, to lower prices in the DXY. Of course, you know, take into account that, you know, we can get lower prices in the DXY. I mean, we can move lower towards 96.50 and, you know, we'll we will still not have violated the basic definition of an uptrend, which is, you know, a series of higher lows. Uh, but 96.50 is you know, very, very important. Uh, we're still decently uh, higher from there. So, you know, if you like it to the downside, there is still in the week ahead. there is still a decent risk reward ratio for you to be lower, uh, you know, towards 96.50. Of course, what happens from there is going to be super critical for the trend because if for some reason we break below that, I think that, you know, this... Um, prolonged period we've had of a very, very slow but steady updrift in, in, in the dollar is going to be over, in which case, even if there is some kind of a correction starting, given the fact that we haven't seen a decent correction in the DXY for quite some time, um, I think it, it, it can be a very, very decent one. And hence, when I was talking about a possible breakout eventually from 112 50, 80, who knows, depends on how fast it comes, because, you know, the trend line resistance as we showed before is descending in the Euro USD. Um, you know, a, a squeeze higher is the most likely scenario. Um, an equivalent level, by the way, if we assume that the Euro continues to move higher, keep in mind that there is an equivalent trend line for the cable. So, you know, the short term uh, level of focus in the cable was 123.80, which we broken above and let's see if we're going to close above but keep in mind that there is a much much more important trend line to watch here um currently passing from like 127.50 uh the 200 daily moving average is also more or less at the same point you can see it here this purple descending trend line so assuming that the euro usd is going to move higher towards that 112.80 uh, area 
uh, it's quite likely if it keeps overperforming that the cable might be getting closer to you know its its uh, trend line resistance. So imagine you know if we get everything breaking out um, to the upside, the euro breaking upside from its descending wedge, the you know the cable breaking upside from its descending wedge. You can understand that there's going to be major bullish implications, and then the DXY will have will have to move a lot lower. Even if that proves to be corrective, it's going to be, you know, probably quite a hefty uh, correction, one that will, you know, provide the opportunity for people to make a decent um, uh, profit being short the dollar. And probably in that case, you will be able to make um, money being short the dollar more or less against everything. But, you know, those are just plans for the, uh, for one future possibility because keep in mind that you know planning ahead is a good thing but uh, assuming that your plan is going to you know get to the point that's going to trigger is a different story i mean steve can i interrupt you for a second sorry uh, we can hear every time the chat room uh, goes bing we can hear it on the webinar so can you close the tab or something yeah i'm not using my headset it's okay. because you know why uh, okay let me mute Muted. yeah that's it thank yep. you done I think I did it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, as you know, I still don't have my computer waiting for my graphics card. Retail sales control group with six months. MA. Um, so um, having said that about those major currencies, I usually don't focus so much about them, but you know, I, I do think that it's worth uh, taking notice of what's happening here. Um, let's go back to the use this Swiss. Because of Salco sales, because of retail sales, this Swiss furniture store is minus 0.5% food and beverage store is minus 0.2% gasoline stations minus 0.9% C. As you see, the US, this Swiss uh, once again rebounded in a formation that you know looked quite clearly corrective. Now, of course, you know, if, if you want to get more evidence, you know, you would have to wait for a breakdown from. This is an internal in which case I would be looking for a move towards a 61.8% fee, but 95.88. That would more or less be this previous low here. Um, so, you know, that is, uh, that is another thing to consider. What's up, coach? US, retail oh, sales. nothing. Just in uh, commodity digestion. <laughs> <laughs> what did you eat? Gold or, or, or silver? Uh, I haven't had anything yet, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I, I don't know if you've seen that. It's like a recent uh, trend for rich people. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've been doing that for a while. They've been eating, go ingesting gold. Yeah, I don't know. I love gold, as you know. But for some reason, I wouldn't want to be having, you know, dinner or lunch. A little gold dust on your, uh, on your lamb? I'd rather put it in a vault, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. What's, your what's your address again? <laughs> in a vault, I said. I I'm moving there next happened. year. I, 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 I'm pretty sure I'm going to uh, move and try Athens for about six months or so next year. You should. You should. Uh, really? You're going you're gonna to like it. Okay. You, 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 is it okay with Stelios too if I yeah. come over there? Okay. All right. Course, I guess. You guys Stelios, will... This is going to give you his bed. Uh, I don't know about his wife. You, <laughs> you, have you, guys, you guys will help me find a place over there before I get there? Uh, say again? You guys will help me find a place to rent before I get oh, there? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Absolutely. All right. It's a plan. Absolutely. Stelios has a, um, has uh, a basement, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep the dogs there. You can live with them. I think it's okay. I want. I want to live in his baby pool. Yeah. <laughs> put a tent. Put in the backyard. Put a tent up. Anyway, uh, yeah. I, I'm serious about this. Go ahead and do it then. All right. I mean, you know, once you're 66, and uh, there's anything you want to do, you can't talk about it anymore. You have to do it. I agree with you. And uh, one more thing, uh, keep in mind, it's going to have a huge benefit for you, right? You won't have to wake up in the middle of the night to do face. Yeah. What time uh, is it when you when we start face three, over? Three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh my gosh. That'd be a whole new lifestyle. Okay. Yeah. So cool. you'll be able to wake up normal time in the morning, have okay. breakfast, go for yeah. a walk. Take a yeah. nap. Take a and nap. And do face. face. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is, is, let's ask the community. Is that okay, guys? 
I don't think they mind wherever you do the show from. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's right. You guys don't care. All right. All right. All right. So I have no guests today. I tried to bring Emma back and she cancels again. Uh, You know, no. Anyway, you know how many people have it? They just have problems and issues and, uh, you know, feel for them. Anyway, so uh, no guests today. So you could take it to the end, Steve. And, uh, I have a great lineup next week. Uh, back to back, uh, Book Var and mm, Mark Newton. Good. Oh, great, actually. Great. Yeah, so it's going to be a great week for the middle of the month. And I think we're going to have some turning points next week. Actually, I'm looking, I don't know if you saw the beginning, but there's a nice three drive setting up on the NASDAQ 100. So. Oh, uh, yeah, I heard, I heard that. And it is quite likely that we're going to, we're going to get something equivalent with. Uh, the s p of course, you know, it's very hard for somebody to try to fade it. I mean, once we broke above this consolidation and then we broke yeah. above 2960. Yeah, it matters see- like 3,100, but I, I don't know uh, if the S&Ps are going to get there. But uh, Yeah, you uh, know, just just some extensions here uh, worth mentioning. The 127% extension is indeed... 3,100. Uh, almost 3,096 yeah. uh, to be exact. Okay, so you see that triangle you have there in purple uh, or blue, whatever the color is? That's mm-hmm. exactly what it measures. Yeah. Let's take okay. the diameter of it. And, no, no, no. Uh, I believe you. I believe you. Anyway, that's what I'm stalking for next week. Might, might be the More case. retail sales disappoints. July web sales downward um, spe- Speaking of which, obviously, you know, uh, we are like a breath away from all-time highs. Yeah. So, you know, uh, people can start, you know, talking about a possible like double top or whatever, but keep in mind that, you know, double tops and double bottoms. Well, so, you know what? Maybe what we saw was a foreshadowing with what happened with the ECB that at first people liked uh, what they had to say and went with what the central bankers wanted to happen and then later faded. And so if uh, they just go a quarter and their language isn't as dovish as the market wants it to be, like they're talking about, you know, two more before the end of the year, um, we could have a reversal in s and like we had in the euro yesterday. Yeah, we could. We could. I mean, if they go 25, as you said, that's going to be an initial disappointment. So if they indeed go 25, the market is definitely going to need a lot of rhetoric. If they go 50, even if the rhetoric, you know, sounds, uh, you know, uh, like normal that, you know, we did 50 because we want to be preemptive, but, you know, it's okay. We might pause uh, cutting rates or whatever. I think the market is going to focus more on, on the 50 base points of the cuts. I, I, I think that everyone's waiting to fade the Fed after the Fed. I'm actually looking to have a toe in the water prior to the Fed because it might just be too pat and what you said, they might disappoint. So, um, it's too pat to just wait and fade the Fed. I think you have to have a toe in the water prior. Oh, yeah. Uh, the chart if, set up. If, if you can get a price that will get you in the money, you know, before the Fed, that's going to be great because then you can have a risk-free um, trade. But the question is, what is this price? I mean, you know, S&P and the NASDAQ are quite close to all-time highs and, you know, there is no technical reason anymore since, I mean, now that we've gotten ourselves above 2960 and we're, you know, trading where we're trading, mm, you know, it's, it's a hard bet to say that it's not going to make it. Now, what looks a lot more bearish, as we've mentioned uh, previously, is definitely the Russell. Because, you oh, know, yeah. the Russell has been trapped in this... Uh, range it's been oscillating in this 145 to 160 roughly range yeah yeah um and you know uh it's we might see another rejection again from 160 um yeah. or maybe they could yeah. even clean out the stops over the highs in may and then it's done yeah but it's it's clearly underperforming so you know as as, as we've mentioned before uh, the Russell is a testament, is proof that um, whatever issues with uh, the U.S. Uh, economy uh, are not only coming from the outside, because if that was the case, the Russell should be doing great. If 
if as the Fed wants to claim and Trump wants to claim, um, the only dangers come from abroad, like China and um, um, Brexit and, you know, whatever else, then we should be seeing Russell, you know, still pushing all-time highs again and again, and the S&P and the Nasdaq underperforming, underperforming more or less in the way that we see the Russell do. But, you know, the situation is the exact opposite. So, you know, that yeah. should be um, proof that the whole rhetoric is not genuine. I have a three drive line coming in in the NASDAQ 100 up around 8170-ish. Let's see. Um, so draw a wedge line off that high in May and the high in August and see where it comes in. U.S. dollar to Japanese yen. There you go. Above 108.3. That's what I'm looking for. U.S. retail sales. Let's see. We don't need guess. We're, we're a guess. Indeed. So something like this yeah. is what we're looking for. Yeah. 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 I mean, you could always get a throw over, but I'm thinking that I that's going to be an area to probe. You know, probe and protect. Probe and protect. Yeah can be the case and yeah. we can easily see something like this so an incremental new high yeah and then lower yeah that's what yeah. i'm looking for yeah it can it can happen and as you said the chances if we keep on appreciating with such a slow pace the chances that the next rsi reading is also going to be lower again is you know quite significant yeah as long as it's not over 70. It kind doesn't of look thing. like it's going to be. I yeah. mean, you know, the way we've been appreciating doesn't look like it's going to be. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. Well, that's my can, guess. Yeah. So, it can end up being a, um, a, a three drive there. Now, yeah. I had a request since yesterday from a friend of ours. Someone's Who's asking about gold, too. Oh, yeah. Good. Because we're going to go in the mental complex. So, we're going we're to okay. cover them all. Okay, buddy. So, gold, if you remember, coach. Yesterday, he shares client 12% after reaching settlement with insurers. If you remember, coach, yesterday I called resistance both gold, silver, and actually, you know, we called support on the euro USD as well. You remember, we were actually entering the 1520 area, and, the, and, and they said that, you know, be careful here because, you know, if gold is to turn lower, you know, here is exactly where you should expect that to happen from. Um, so I have to tell you that the fact that we rejected from there is beautiful because, you know, that was my plan all, all ahead. I mean, all along since, you know, we were trading there. Um, so I do think that there is a very, very, very decent chance that we're going to retest these lows roughly at 1490 and actually continue lower from there. So, um... Simply put, and it's exactly what I was saying even before the ECB yesterday, below this support resistance area, I think you should be looking lower. And the same deal yesterday, I said, listen, roughly 18 and a half is resistance for silver. We made it to 1844, so almost, um, and we seem to be failing. So same, same deal here. Um, I think we can easily come down to 70-70, break below there, and then see more weakness, perhaps like towards 16-80 or whatever. So I, I keep insisting the path of less resistance uh, remains to the downside, but let me reiterate, in the short term, okay? I mean, I'm not bearish gold or silver uh, in, in the medium to long run, but in the short run, I do think that it's healthy if we see the correction take us lower from here. I, I, I never thought that it's sufficient, this pullback is sufficient in time or price, mostly in time, to be honest, because I would be satisfied with, especially with the pullback we got in silver, I mean, going from uh, 1960 down to 1770, would be sufficient to me if we did it, you know, in slower manner, like a triangle or a slower path 
to the downside, like a zigzag, you know, that would take more time to unfold. But, you know, seeing how impulsive the first low, leg lower was, um, you know, I felt quite, I felt quite strongly that there is at no, least one, one more missing. Scotland, so and, you know, this is what here. I still think. Now, uh, let's go back to the daily because we had a question since yesterday about what's happening with Palladium. And you can see here, we were talking about the possibility that this is a triangle. So far, Trump is right. Contrary to Palladium, expectations of a tariff surge, uh, Chinese import prices The issue to here is that we've been, to US dollar to we've been we've been taking out the highs, right? I mean, we, we incrementally traded above the previous high. Uh, of course, it remains to be confirmed. Um, I was looking to be short palladium since we were moving higher here because, you know, the rebound looked corrective to me, but we never broke this uh, trend line support. So, you know, I never ended up being short palladium. <laughs> good, good thing, actually. Um, now, uh, are we uh, truly breaking out from here? We might. We might. If a first important step is going to be to see how we're going to close the week. Because, you know, it's going to be quite important for, ma for market participants as well. If we do close above 1600, I think that, you know, that probably Markets. indicates what is most important in the that the correction is over. Idea. And, you know, we're headed higher. Upside targets from there, 1709, the 127% extension would be the first one. Okay. So, you know, I need to be a little bit more patient because you never know. We still have a few hours on the day. If we reverse lower, that might have been a false break higher, but, you know, you have to respect the trend. I mean, irrespective of, you know, whatever has been happening here, I was never looking for palladium to crash lower, not yet, because the price action has been bullish. I was just expecting that what would happen here might have been something like this, right? That, that's what we drew a few days ago, that we might spend more time trading below like 20... Uh, 20, uh, sorry, 1270 and 1600. So oscillating in this larger range before eventually we break higher. Because keep in mind that, look at Palladium here. It's been producing two kinds of moves. Impulsive moves higher and corrective moves lower or horizontally. So I was expecting that if, if this is genuinely a triangle, we might see, you know, we might spend more time consolidating in it, in which case, I would have loved to sort a breakdown from that um, ascending trend line support. Didn't happen, so perhaps that's it. Perhaps that's, that's the correction. And another way you can look at it, if you want to look at it, you know, uh, from a bullish perspective, is this. There you go. So, actually, let's make it green. What do you see here? Right? What is this? Textbook cap and handle formation. What is a cap and handle formation? It's a continuation formation. Okay. So 1600, quite important. If we break above it, the implied target from theory, to go a little bit into theory, would be this. Above 1900, as you see. Okay. So, you know, it is what it is. Important to see how we're going to close today. And here is Platinum. Why am I closely watching Platinum? Because it was one of the metals that was underperforming uh, the uh, other two precious metals, gold and silver. And recently, it woke up, it gave us like, you know, quite an impressive move here, uh, which we hadn't seen in a long time. But most importantly, after a false break higher, it's been flirting once again with a very, very, very significant descending trend line resistance. You can see it here. So, you know, quite important to see what's going to happen from here, because if we do break above this, 
I think there can be a lot more upside for platinum. And I think that that might also be an indication that especially against gold, we might see platinum overperform. At least for a period of time. And, you know, wouldn't make sense because it has been underperforming for so long. I remind you that for a huge period of time, platinum was, you know, well accepted as a more precious metal than gold, right? It was more expensive than gold. And it ended up trading at a very steep discount to gold. Um, so, you know, perhaps the pendulum has to shift, uh, you know, has to shift the other way, uh, at least for a period of time. Uh, somebody's asking for me to comment on the FTSE. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, palladium, yep, did that. Gold, did that. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's go to the FTSE. FTSE 100, there we go. So, um, we saw this double bottom here, you can see it. Um, once we broke above 7,200, we triggered that. Keep in mind, not coincidentally, 7,200 was also the level through which the 200 daily moving average was passing. So, you know, the, the 200 DMA was also the neckline of that double bottom. And once we pulled back clearly in a corrective manner, guess where we stalled? when we back-tested 7,200. So now we're breaking above this recent consolidation. So as I have drawn here, you can see, I see no real resistance that would hold us from pushing towards the 61.8 of this last move lower, which passes from 7,458. So that's what I think about the FTSE. I think that in the short term, uh, it looks good for more upside. Now, it's always good putting things into perspective. So if I zoom out, what you have to ask yourself is, do you have a clear trend here? No, you don't. I mean, there is a decent likelihood that this whole formation might prove to be something like around the top it looks like one quite a lot. Of course, it might prove to be a prolonged consolidation that's going to be resolved to the upside. If that happens, you should expect a lot more upside because once a market corrects for that long and it decides that it wants to continue higher, probably it's going to continue higher for quite some time. Okay. But on the other hand, looks, you know, looks very, very uh, similar to you know, plenty of um, around the tops I've seen in my life. Yeah, it looks so, like year, years of distribution. Yeah, exactly. Years of distribution, exactly. So bottom line, whatever you do in the FTSE, take any, any kind of action you want, but in my opinion, you should limit your time horizon to rather short. I'm not a scalper, of course. When I say short, I don't mean like two hours. Of course, you can do that as well. But I mean a few days at a time, simply because we have been without a trend since the end of 2016. And that is something that you cannot ignore. Okay. Also, a stronger pound doesn't help. Of course not. The fact that we, brought, uh, we, we broke above 123.80 uh, yeah. is likely going, uh, going to act as a headwind, for sure. And needless to say, um, although to be fair, coach, although to be fair, um, if we assume that we're going to see a period that the pound is going to be overperforming due to Brexit developments, I have to assume that in this case, we will see both the pound and the FTSE perform well because there has been so much negativity priced in both in the price of the pound and the stock market that a resolution um, of Brexit in a better way than the market is currently pricing in uh, is probably going to propel both of them higher. So due to the specific circumstances, I can say 
that it's quite likely that we might see both of them do well for a period of time if, if you know, we, got, yeah. we get news. Yeah. We'll probably take a 3,200 or higher S&P to drag the FTSE to take out. What was its high in May of 2018? 3,900. Okay. And that was uh, over a year ago. We got the high... Yeah, in May, May of 2018. 22 May, 22nd of May, 2018. Yeah, so it's been uh, like... Look what, how many new highs we've months. made in S&Ps without the footsies. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, since we mentioned that, the situation with the DAX is not very dissimilar, right? I mean, right. the DAX has not been... Um, confounded to a horizontal distribution because we, we got this move lower from 11,800. But look at this. This was a rounded top. Now, we almost all also made it. This was a head and shoulders formation. Its target, I don't remember exactly where it was. It was roughly at 10,000. We almost fulfilled the target. One thing is for sure. If you took the trade for the head and shoulders formation, you made money. I mean, irrespective of the fact that we didn't exactly make it to the head and shoulders formations target, I mean, if it wasn't your first rodeo, of course, you know, once we had made it to, let's say, above 10,000, hopefully you had already taken some profits, reduced your position, uh, trailed your stop loss, combination of all, most likely. Um, and now we're rebounding again, but look where we are. I mean, we've still spent... Yeah, same deal. Just look where we were at the end of 2016 here. So, you know, again, quite a, you know, big uh, period, a long period of distribution, as you said. Now, on the other hand, if we do break higher after such a prolonged, uh, you know, um, consolidation, I think we can move quite a lot higher from there. But that's a big if, especially if we consider where we currently are likely uh, having to do with the business cycle. Now, of course, if they do it, if they manage to do it and, you know, push everything back for a year uh, until we get the U.S. elections, which, you know, that's what they're trying to do, then it's plenty of time for the indices to, you know, to push clearly higher. Personally, you know, as I've said before, I give it at best a 50% chance, but there is that chance. There is that chance because we know that they're going to do their best. I mean, they're going to throw everything at it, everything, monetary policy, fiscal policy, you know, everything they have, like good news, uh, deals or, you know, whatever is needed, whatever it takes. As Draghi said, you know, plenty of years ago, they'll do whatever it takes. Okay, coach, let me see if we have any leftover questions. Nah. So I think we can wish everybody a nice weekend. Yep. And you would want to check in Sunday night, Monday morning. There's going to be, uh, you know, there's, there are going to be two different uh, appealing offers for you to take and become a Forex Analytics client. Um, so I, uh, um, you know, I seriously... Yeah. Yeah. Hope you take advantage of that. In my extremely accurate and humble and objective opinion, um, I, I guarantee this is going to help you. I'm not guaranteeing it's going to make money, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to guarantee that you're going to become a better trader, immersing yourself with guys like Blake and Steve and Greg and Andre and Amanda and uh, Joe and Stell and really the whole team. And Polly, uh, Polly, yeah. See, we have so many good people. I, I, you know, I can't remember anymore. I remember when it was small. So, I mean, uh, the guys have really built up a, one of the strongest teams I've seen. Uh, and I've had a, you know, I've been in the business uh, five, ten years. So, uh, it's one of the strongest teams I've ever been part of. So, five, ten, five, ten decades. You probably mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> almost five. Oh, well, yeah, of course, almost five. Yeah, and uh, when I'm 72, it'll be five decades. You see? Yeah, so not far away. All right, well, I'm just going to hobble away from my 
laptop now and go put on a pair of Depends and put my false teeth in. And go and, go and, go find go find uh, the go find the Greek diner. I yeah. mean, it's amazing in New York when we were for the uh, expo. Yeah, literally, I, I I used like every morning I went to a different diner. You know, I I yeah. wanted to wake up a little bit earlier so I can. I knew that during the day, you know, I would be, um, you know, busy. extremely extremely busy. So at least I want to get some fresh air you know, to get the date started. So I would walk every day to a different diner, like almost all of them, they were owned by Greeks. I mean, huh. I have no idea why. It's like you didn't leave home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I have no idea why. I mean, somebody would guess that the Greek economy is just people having restaurants. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good diet that the Greeks have. Uh, one complaint uh, I got from someone that I was talking about moving there, he goes, he just got bored with the food, Steve, that everywhere in Greece is the same, unlike Italy and France, where you go to different provinces and the cooking is different. Is he right? No. Okay. All right. No. Uh, All right. He, he's probably right if he's, you know, uh, if he had been trying the most touristic places, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But thankfully, nowadays with TripAdvisor and applications like that, you can easily locate, you know, the best places around you and not the most touristic ones. So, okay. But, you know, uh, no, there's no, different that's... Greek cooking, you know, like there's Mediterranean, you know, there's different styles and choices of cooking in other European countries. It's not uh, lamb everywhere, right? Oh, are you serious? First of all, lamb is not... Uh, part of a regular diet. That's more like Turk, Turkish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more okay. Eastern countries. Yes. Okay. Not that we don't have lamb, but people yeah. don't really eat that much. I mean, okay. very little, I would tell you. All right. All right. Um, as, long, as long as they have uh, pizza, I'll be all right. Anyway. But, but, it, but I, can tell you as a, I can tell you as a fact, not because I'm Greek, because I can tell you, you know, horrible things about Greece as well. I mean, get me started talking about the Greek economy and you'll hear, you know, all the, all the worst. But, um, I can tell you as a fact that I've been to many places and many countries in the world, and I can tell you something that all my foreign friends that have visited agree with. Yeah, yeah. Um, in Greece, you can find the, probably the best food on the planet for, you know, value for money. Okay. I mean, you can find excellent restaurants like French, Italian, whatever, besides, I mean, Greek cuisine at quite appealing prices but excellent because there is you know huge competition having to do with uh, well with it's one of and... it's one of the last pleasures in life for me eating so you know how they you could tell the difference between men who go into a bar that are 40 and over compared to 40 and younger before they order a drink they ask for a menu <laughs> All right. So anyway, that's me. Yeah, then pro pro probably, probably I was um, I was born uh, over forty. <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, I guess that's a wrap. Uh, I want to thank everyone for hanging out with us again. Uh, hope that we've added value to what you're trying to accomplish every day. That's our mission to build you up, edify you, and have a great lineup next week. And everyone have a great weekend. And remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And uh, our community, uh, we count as a great blessing in our life every day. So uh, you're welcome, Hamid, Ingmar. Everyone have a great weekend. And let's kill them next week, okay? Oh, there's a joke from Greece. A 90-year-old person dies in Greece, and they say he dies really young. Is that true, Steve? More or less, yes. I, okay. I, don't, I don't remember the last time I had like an aunt or whatever. I mean, the only the only two people I remember dying and people not saying they're very young are both of my wife's uh, grandmothers. One died at 102 years old and the oh other one... Oh, my goodness. Long candles in Greece. All right, <laughs> buddy. All right, well, I'm into a little extension. You know, uh, when I had... Uh, yeah, I'll just wrap it with this uh, story. 
after I was went through all the cancer, you know, treatments and surgery and everything, a friend of mine put me in touch with his rabbi, who's a healer, um, you know, Kabbalah stuff. And he said to me, Dale, I want you to make a contract with God that you're going to help um, poor and homeless people, even if you don't have a lot. And I said, well, Rabbi, I already do that. He said, well, I want you to ask God for 10 more good years and that you're going to do that. So I said, okay, Rabbi, uh, okay, I'll make a contract with God. Well, five have passed and I'm ready to renegotiate with God because I wanted more than another five. <laughs> he lowballed me, the rabbi. Anyway, so everyone have a great weekend. And yeah, we'll, coach. okay, and we'll uh, catch you Monday. We're gonna have a great week next week. I feel it in my bones. All right, everyone, adios. Steve, can you close it? You can do it, you're the host. Okay, yes, I don't, you don't. let me look for it. Okay, oh yeah, and meeting, okay. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye. Love you guys. See you Monday.